and welcome to the last episode. Oh, I can't believe we've come to the end already. Done. It's flown, hasn't it? It's flown. We hope you have really enjoyed yourselves. We've really enjoyed ourselves doing them. Um, but for one last time, shall we recap yeah. what we've been looking at? So we've at? been thinking about hope in Jesus in lots of different ways, haven't we? Yes. So day one was hope in... The light of the world, all the way back when. We've got our son. Um, week two, day two, was um, he's the peace bringer. Yeah, so we've got our dove, our symbol of peace. And yeah. you might have remembered looking for that around Boston Spa. Yes. Day three was the provider. <laughs> yep. So that was when we learned the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Yeah. Last week we heard about how Jesus was the healer. Yeah. Um, and this week... We're hearing all about Jesus, the forgiver. Brilliant. So we have learned an incredible amount. We're thankful to Pete and Betsy. Yeah. Good old Pete and Betsy who've been telling our stories. Um, but we're going to get on our feet now, aren't we? Yeah. And for one last time, let's give it all we've got in singing... Our God it's is a great, great big, big God. Our God is a great big God. as well for our last time definitely so phil it's present time again last present last present. what have you got for me oh this one rustles and we've got a oh a lovely kind of scarf or a mat i'll put that on the floor there and uh, some curious cinnamon curiously cinnamon is this your cereal at home kate that's our breakfast cereal yeah yeah absolutely it's empty. so the clues for today's story are a, a blanket and some breakfast Ooh, cereal. Interesting. Breakfast. Yeah. What could it be? Is it when Jesus had breakfast on the beach with his disciples? Spot on. Absolutely. Boom. Nailed it. it. Is. 
So we're going to be hearing all about that story a little bit later and how that relates to Jesus as the forgiver. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what comes up. But I think first, have we got the postman? Postman. Percy. From Percy. Perth. <laughs> <laughs> Just jumped out of my head there. It's Percy, the postman from Perth, for the last time. Let's see what he's got to say to us. boys and girls. Oh, let's have a look at some of the pictures you've been sending in. Oh, wow, boys and girls. Those are fantastic. Amazing. I especially like that third one. Absolutely fabulous. Right, anyway, boys and girls, that's it. I'll be seeing you later. Thanks, Percy. We've really enjoyed your uh, your little stories and your tales and your animals over the last uh, over the last few weeks. So yeah. thanks again for today. No, great stuff, Percy. Uh, we have got your thirty second challenge. Last one. Let's make this a good one. What have we got to do, Kate? So before we settle down to hear our story, we're going to set the timer going in a moment. We would like you to go grab a blanket or a rug or a cushion, something to sit down on. Yeah. And uh, and if you want to have a little snack as well, then that's absolutely fine. We've got breakfast cereal here. You could just grab a biscuit, a couple of grapes, a breadstick, whatever around. Settle down, and we're going to set the timer going in three, three two, two, one, go. go. cushion if you've got your things just settle down get comfy because now we're going to hear the story of Jesus the forgiver with Pete and Betsy yeah over to you Pete and Betsy hello boys and girls hello hello Pete Betsy this is our last story oh no we're so so we've really enjoyed telling our stories to you does that mean holiday club's over it means holiday club's over Last oh. one. Oh. <laughs> but we have one more story. Yeah. This story is about Jesus after he had died and he had been raised to life again. Wow. And it takes place on my favourite place. Where's that, Pete? The beach. Oh, the beach. Two things that I love. Beaches and breakfast. Yum, 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 yum. What like bacon sandwiches and croissants and pan au chocolat? Absolutely, Betsy. This takes place while they're having breakfast and they're on the beach. So Jesus oh. had died, he'd given up his life, and three days later, to everyone's amazement, he had been raised to life. How exciting! Yeah. so cool but there was one very special moment still to come do you remember peter one of his disciples yes well peter had done something very sad he had denied jesus yes i don't know you i don't know you yeah he didn't he said to a girl that he didn't know who jesus was and it really broke his heart because jesus knew he was going to do it he felt like he'd betrayed jesus he felt like he'd let him down that is I, really sad. I think we've all felt like that, haven't we? That we've let Jesus down and we've betrayed him. We've done things in our lives that we shouldn't have and things like that. Well, Jesus, after he'd risen to life, had come to see Peter on the beach in a very special way. And for three times, the three times that Peter had said that he didn't know him, he said to 
Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, of course I do, Jesus. And he said it again, do you love me? And he said, of course I do. And the third time he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, of course I do, Jesus. Wow. And Jesus says, well, you're going to be one of my special followers. He's going to help me build my church. No longer be a fisher of fish, but a fisher of people. Peter was going to have a very special place. Jesus had forgiven Peter for all the things he'd done wrong. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. And you know what, boys and girls and Betsy? What? Jesus will forgive us too for all the wrong things that we have done too. No matter how bad, no matter how dreadful, Jesus, because he's died and he's risen to life and he's conquered sin, he will forgive us for everything if we come to him like Peter did. <gasps> this is the best news. It's the best news, isn't it, Betsy? It's so good. Well, boys and girls, thank you for listening to our stories this summer. It's we been... love seeing you. And I think we want to say to everybody, Betsy, that keep putting your trust in Jesus, just like Peter did. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you, boys and girls. We might see you again. Thank you so much. Bye! Well, thanks, Pete and Betsy, for our story today. It was interesting, wasn't it, to hear all about how Peter got things wrong and sinned. Sometimes we do things wrong, don't we? Most of the time we play nicely with our brothers and sisters. We do what our parents ask us to do. We remember to say please and thank you. We go to bed when we're asked to and get up when it's time to do so. But I have to say sometimes we don't get everything right, do we? Sometimes we do things wrong. Not the little things like, oops, I spilt my drink or I forgot to feed the dog. But something really wrong that we decide to do even though we know that we're not meant to. And that's what we call a sin. Now, sin pushes us away from God. Think about sin as this dirty coin. Now, you've got an activity with a coin like this in your activity booklets. So maybe when we finish today's episode, you can have a go at this. I'm gonna pop my dirty coin into my little pot of vinegar. So when we do things wrong, when we mess up, we call that sin. And that sin pushes us away or separates us from God who never sins. Now we heard the story today about Peter, one of Jesus's best friends. He was such a good friend that he'd been following Jesus every day for over three years. But Peter denied Jesus just before he was killed. And that sin pushed him away from his friend. I think Peter was worried that he would not be friends with Jesus ever again. But happily, the story doesn't end there, does it? Jesus died and was buried, but then he came back to life on the third day. He went and visited his disciples and helped them catch all those fish and then enjoy a lovely breakfast on the beach at the side of a lake. And Jesus came and found Peter. And he allowed Peter to say what he felt about Jesus. He allowed Peter to think that there would be a future and P Jesus actually gave Peter some really big things to do. And Peter followed Jesus for the rest of his life. So Jesus forgave Peter. He came looking for him specifically because he wanted to forgive him. And it's just the same for us. When we sin, it's Jesus who comes looking for us. Jesus forgives us and puts us back in a right place with God. He died for us on the cross so that he can forgive us. And when he forgives us, when we get things wrong, he puts us back together with God. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing? Now, let's have a look what's happened to my dirty old coin while we've been sitting chatting. So I'm just going to dry it off. It's gone all shiny and new. And that's just how it is when God forgives us through Jesus. So we might mess up. We might do something that we really are sorry about. 
And if we say sorry to Jesus, then we can just be shiny and new and in the right place with God, just like this coin. So now we're going to hear a bit more from Dynamic Dan. So I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you all again soon. Hello, it's Dynamic Dan here. And today I'm in the mood for a picnic as I'm thinking all about Jesus and the picnic on the beach. But first, if you don't mind, it's hungry work making videos. So I thought I'd have some of my picnic now, starting with this delicious chicken sandwich. Yum. <laughs> Ugh, I don't think I'll eat that. That would be foul play. <laughs> Maybe I'll try crisps instead. I love crisps. I wonder what flavor they could be. Let's have a look. <laughs> Oh, there was a big snake in there. I think someone is playing tricks on me. Uh, maybe I'll have a drink instead. I have some water here. Yeah, ooh, this is strange. Do you want to see? I think this must be spring water. <laughs> spring water. We'll move on. Well, the disciples didn't have sandwiches and crisps and things like that, but they were surrounded by water. They were in their boat trying to catch some fish, but not having much luck. They were getting frustrated and probably angry too, until Jesus performed one of his many miracles. Things that seemed impossible, but he could do them because he is awesome. He said to the disciples, cast out your nets on the other side of the boat. And they weren't sure, they knew the water was empty, but they did, and soon they caught loads and loads of fish and had a great big fishy feast of a picnic. Yum! Problem is, I don't have any fish or any other food now. Oh, I'll just have to go hungry. Let's do a card trick instead. What we'll do, hey, a fish, look at that. That must be the catch of the day. And there's nothing fishy about that. Now this story also makes me think about forgiveness. Peter, a close friend of Jesus, lied and said he'd never even heard of him. But Jesus still chose to forgive Peter because he loved him, just as God loves us and forgives us for the things that we do and say that aren't right. And so we should learn to forgive others where we can. And forgiveness comes from the heart. In fact, I have a picture of a heart just here. There it is, that's not the right shape. What is that? Looks like a red nose or a cherry, a tomato. Hmm. Hey, there's more here too. Four pieces. Oh, maybe these are the pieces of a broken heart. You see, sometimes when we get upset or angry or hurt by the things people have done to us or said to us, it can leave us feeling like we have a broken heart. How am I gonna fix this? Has anyone got any smeller tape? It's a bit like sellotape, but I can't say sellotape. I've never learned how. Maybe if I squeeze them together like this and say abracadabra. Oh, um, we'll try again. Abracadabra. No, maybe we'll try a magic word. Let's try the word God restores because God can help with a broken heart. We'll try a wand too. Everyone say God restores on three. One, two, three. God restores. Yeah. Oh, I broke my wand. We'll try the other end. It should still work. On three. One, two, three. God restores. Ah. Broken wand. Now I have a broken wand and a broken heart. Oh no. Let's see if it's worked though. Maybe. You won't believe this. All the pieces are on the same picture. Do you want to see? Okay, prepare to be amazed. Here we go. One completely restored. Ha! Ah, that's not right. Oh, this reminds me that sometimes it can feel like our heart isn't in the right place when it comes to forgiving someone. Sometimes we have to make a choice to forgive someone before we really feel like we want to in our heart. That can leave us feeling mixed up and muddled up like this heart. But sometimes that's the right thing to do. Hmm, maybe we'll try again. A different magic wand, I think. Uh, ah, yes, let's try this wand. This is my strongest wand. I've had this for 10 years. It has never, ever let me down. With this wand, what's that? No, no, it can't bend. It's made of steel. It's super strong, like me. Urgh. With this wand, we should be able to... Hmm? No, I don't think so. No, it can't bend. I can even wave it in the air like that. And you can see, whoa, it's all twisty and bendy. Let's try this wand. You know the drill. Everyone say, God restores. One, two, three, God restores. Let's see if it's worked. I hope it has. Yes, it has. You want to see? Okay, I will show you. Ready? The heart is completely restored. Back to normal. Yeah, ooh. That's not right either. It's all twisted. 
This reminds me that sometimes when we are faced with that choice about whether to forgive someone or not, we can get twisted ideas of what's right and wrong. Sometimes we might think it's better to get back at them, to upset them, to hurt them, to get our revenge. But God doesn't want us to do that. So I think we need to try again. Maybe another magic wand. Oh yes, I have one down here. A really big wand to remind us that God's love is really big. Let's see. Ah yes. Massive wand. Oh, that's not very big. I was hoping for a bigger wand than that. Not to worry. What was that noise? Definitely heard a noise. What? I heard it again. What is that noise? I don't know. Oh wow. A massive wand, still nowhere near as big as God's love. But let's see if it's big enough to overcome this problem. God's love is bigger than any problem. Let's see. Everyone say, God restores on three. One, two, three, God restores. Wow, it's huge, it's like a helicopter. Oh. Now who thinks it might have worked? I hope so, I'm running out of wands. Let's see if the heart is restored. Yes, it is. Hooray, it's worked. Ta-da. Hmm? Oh, you want to see? Of course, I'll show you. Fingers crossed. I hope it's worked. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, I think. Yes, there we are. The heart is completely back to normal. And through God's love, we can choose to forgive others and we can feel in our hearts that's the right thing to do. Although I think God's love is even bigger than this. Let's try one more thing. Maybe, I know, the reason God loves us so much is because he gave his only son so that we could be forgiven for the things that we get wrong. And his son was called Jesus. Let's wave this J for Jesus around over the bag and let's see if anything else happens. This time we won't say God restores, we'll say God's love is so big on three. One, two, three, God's love is so big. Let's have a look. Has it worked? Has it worked? Something's happening. Something's happening. Wow! Look at this we have. Oh, a great big heart. It's absolutely huge. Wow! Still nowhere near as big as God's love. God loves us so much and we should focus on his love and let that help us to forgive others. Well, I hope you have loved this video as much as I've loved making it. I've been Dynamic Dan, stay awesome and bye for now. Dynamic Dan, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Dynamic, brilliant. Um, Dynamic Dan is on YouTube, isn't he? Yes. So if you want to watch those again, just search Dynamic Dan on YouTube and I'm sure you'll be able to find... Yeah, and I think he's got loads more videos as well on YouTube, yeah. hasn't he? So definitely worth a watch. He's, so, uh, he's a talented guy. Yeah, you don't have to lose Dynamic Dan. He's there by the gift of the internet. There you go. Um, but so, to another challenge now. Yeah, so our memory verse challenge. <laughs> Um, this time you don't have anything from us for the memory verse challenge you know like last time we had the bits of paper with the words cut up well this time we're hoping that you might have remembered the challenge the, the memory verse sorry all on your own so yeah you've got 30 seconds we'll set the clock see if you can either write out a piece of paper or tell it to an adult whoever and um, see how much of it you can remember without any help at all on your marks get set Go, go. How much did you write down? Um, it's, yeah, it's been a great verse to learn over this holiday club. We're just going to say it though one more time. So we're going to put a blank screen 
Let's see if we can all say it together. together. Here we go. Let us hold on firmly to the hope we profess because we can trust God to keep his promise. Hebrews 10, 23. Well, how much did you remember of it? Um, even though Holiday Club is coming to an end, let's see if we can keep that verse in our minds, but more importantly, in our hearts, knowing that God always keeps his promises and we can always put our hope and our trust in him. What a great verse that we've been learning. Absolutely. And now um, we've got Sue, who's going to talk all about Jesus, the forgiver, and about how forgiveness is such a great gift um, and how it's helped her in her life. I want to introduce you today to a very old friend of mine. As you can see, he's a bit tatty now because he's pretty old and has always been well loved. But you might wonder what my ancient teddy bear has got to do with forgiving people that hurt you. So let me explain. When I was about five, I lived in a road where there were eight children all of us about the same age, and we all played together, usually quite happily, and had lots of fun. One day though, our play didn't quite turn out as happy as normal. One of the boys called Joseph, who was not always as kind as the others, took my teddy bear and ran off with him. Evidently, the idea of the game was that we would all chase him and the winner would get my teddy bear. Well, as you can imagine, I wasn't too happy about this and ran after him as fast as my legs would carry me. But I've never been very good at running, so I wasn't the first person to get to him. But as he went to hand over my bear to the person who had, I tried to snatch him back. But Joseph wasn't having that. And with all his might, he threw my teddy bear into a big, muddy puddle. I grabbed Ted and ran home to my mum, who washed him and got him clean for me. But what was never found was one of his eyes, which was missing. Joseph's mum made him come and say sorry, but I was not having that and refused to have anything to do with him. Now, why do you think that was bad? Well, I ended up not being able to play with all the other children because Joseph was part of the gang and I had no one to walk to school with or play with. I felt really lonely and blamed Joseph even more for what had happened. But one day, my nana bought me a book all about the Lord's Prayer and she read it with me, explaining what all the words meant. And the one thing we talked about most was the line in the Lord's Prayer that says, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us. That's perhaps a bit hard to understand. But Nana explained that it meant we were saying sorry to God for something we've done and we don't want to do any more. But we also need to forgive people who have done wrong to us. Nana said that sometimes others hurt us very badly, so we need to ask God to help us to forgive them. Because it's really hard, or we don't want to. And that's what we did. I told her about Joseph and my bear, and how lonely I now felt. And together we ask God to help me to forgive Joseph. And do you know what? It worked. I didn't feel lonely anymore and I went back out to join in with my friends. Although that was a very long time ago, it taught me a lesson I have never forgotten. God loves you and me and forgives us when we mess up 
and say sorry and really mean it. And if we don't accept it when others say sorry to us and really mean it, then it doesn't do us any good either. Our heart isn't right and it makes us feel really bad. Well, thanks, Sue. That was, uh, that was a fantastic story. I, I love the teddy bear. Oh, great teddy, teddy bear. bear. Yeah, it was brilliant. So uh, thank you very much, Sue. It was lovely to hear your story. Um, and now we're going to take some time to pray. And Steve and Sue are going to lead us in our prayers. But first, we're going to sing Father and just get ready to pray. your hand palm up and each of your fingers represents one letter of the word hope starting with your index finger let's spell out the word h o p e so now we'll point to each finger at a time as we pray for different things that start with each letter and we'll give you a little time to say your own things to god for each one so let's pray together H is for happy. Let's thank God for all the things that make us happy. Oh, oh dear. Say sorry for the things that we have done that have made God and other people sad. P is for please. Let's ask God for the things that we need and want. E is for everyone else. Pray for others that are ill or situations that you know about that need God's healing help. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Steve and Sue, for leading us in prayer throughout these past five weeks. Um, and keep remembering that system of praying, those four yeah. fingers, H-O-P-E. Um, it's a great way to remember how to pray. If you're struggling ever to pray, keep remembering that little system. And also, these videos are still on YouTube. So if you ever forget what it is, 
you can just look it up on the Bram and Benefis YouTube page. Brilliant, that's great. So we're nearly done for today, but obviously you've picked up your activity packs um, and you've got your craft activity, so just going yes. to explain what that is. This looks good fun. So uh, for breakfast on the beach, the disciples had fish. So you've got pipe cleaners to cut up to make lots of little mm -hmm. fish, and then you will need to supply your own pencil, bit of string, and then there's some magnets as well, and it's a fishing game, so you can go in, and I'm not going to do this very well, go in and try and catch, uh, nearly uh, catch your fish. That looks good today's fun. craft. Hope you have fun with that. Brilliant. Well, that brings us to the end of Holiday Club. Should we have one blast of recapping all the things that we've been learning? Let's do that. So right at the top, we've got Jesus is the light of the world. He is the one that opens our eyes like that blind man yep. to who he is. Jesus is the peace giver, so he calmed the storm for the disciples, but he can bring peace to our lives whenever things are a bit troubled or upsetting um, and just help us to be calm. Yeah. Week three, day three, we thought about Jesus being the provider. He fed 5,000 people with only two fish and a few loaves of bread. Um, he is the one that can provide for our every need, both physical and spiritual. He can do everything. He can provide for everything. And week four, we thought about Jesus, the healer, who did those amazing things to heal people. Um, but he's still there to heal us and to look after us and care for us now when we're not feeling great. And today we heard about how he is the forgiver. Uh, Jesus is the one that forgives our sin in our lives. Just like Peter, who betrayed him, uh, who said he would never betray him, but then did. He comes to Peter and brings forgiveness, and he brings forgiveness to us all, which is just the greatest news, that we can be forgiven by God and come into this relationship with him. Uh, if anything, of all the things that you've seen in these episodes this uh, summer, Remember that Jesus is the one that can bring hope in all of these ways. Uh, so keep close to him. Great. We've really enjoyed spending time with you over the summer. Um, I'm sure you'll hear again from us. Yes. So we'll be back in touch, let you know about what we're doing next. But thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been great fun, hasn't it? And we've yeah. really enjoyed everything. Yeah. Shall I pray to finish? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, Father, thank you so much for the Lord Jesus. Thank you that how he is. Uh, just the light and the peace and the provider and the healer and the forgiver. Lord, I pray for everyone who's been watching these videos and for us here as well, that we would just continue to trust in him and hold to him. Thank you that he is the God of the entire universe. He is the one with everything in his hands and the one we can put our hope in. So as we leave Holiday Club this year, help us to be trusting in Jesus and the promises that he's brought. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll Great be in touch. Bye-bye.